So you see the problem example on your screen. What it essentially has is a box section, a thin walled uh, box section that you have over here. And in this one, this is the that is this is subjected to a section shear of you know 10 kilopounds or 10 kips over here. This is essentially the same section just drawn in 2D that you have, right? Now what you are asked is to uh, find the variation of the shear flow Q. So essentially how Q varies across a section. Now before you know trying to solve this and trying to find the numbers from based on what we learned right how do how do you expect the q to vary so again remember it is just like the flow of water so if you are pouring water from the you know top over here the water has to go from both the sides through the walls and then has to come out from here so uh, what what you can you know vaguely imagine is that the the, the flow of the shear is going to happen something like this Right. So this you can imagine as the flow of shear is going to be. Also, one more thing remember that for the faces which are uh, perpendicular to the direction of the shear, the variation of the shear force is linear. That what that was one of the thing we concluded. Right. Also, in the phase which is parallel to the direction of the shear you must have the variation is parabolic so what you expect to see and we will see we'll see if we find if we come to that kind of conclusion is that in this phase maybe it becomes you know something you know the variation will be linear remember so again uh, a representation of the magnitude not the direction and in this phase maybe you will have you know a variation which is kind of parabolic like this over here and the remaining and the it will be same for the other phases so for this phase also you should have you know something like this over here and then for you know this particular phase you will have uh, something like this and for the bottom one also you will you can expect to have a you know a similar kind of a triangle which you had at the top but anyway so if if we you know take a look at this problem and try to you know solve it which is over here and also one more thing remember one more important thing that that this guy that you see since it is like the flow of water here at this interface over here the water which is over here must come down to the water over here so whatever the q that you will get over here must be equal to the q over here right so we will see if we get that thing as well okay now let's take a look at this section so this is the box section which i which i said in 2d so let me again so here also the top part is the flange let me let let's make a note of it so this is your flange and this guy is your web right so let me scroll down a little bit maybe so to have these things clear okay so the flange and the web that is there okay so for let's start with the flange so in the flange so this is the shear force which is acting throughout so in the flange if i take a small section if i take a small chunk maybe up to here right Again, since it's a doubly symmetric section or a symmetric section, section, just doing one quarter maybe is sufficient. You know how the variation for the rest is going to be. So if I am taking a small chunk, which is say uh, at maybe at, at, a, at a distance S from similar to what we did before, say let's say this guy is at a distance S from here and I'm trying to find what is the value of the Q uh, in this particular first Q in the flange, right? So if I have to find that one, so I'm writing the flange over here right so the q of flange is again remember it is vq divided by i right now you have i for this section is given i will tell you what the i is the i for the section is given as 179.7 inch raised to 4 right so you're given vq by i so you know the v the v is the you know 10 you know the i this is known so i is known over here now what is the q again q is a section you have left behind so we are have to going to have to calculate the q for you know this area which is over here so let's write the q for that one so for the q and here also one more thing to note these dimensions are marked center to center so you see this is given three and then one and one it is just six plus you know half and half so that is the seven so it is okay for thin walled sections if you just are if you're just dealing with you know the center line dimensions that is there okay so for the uh, for the for the q it is going to be the area of you know this one over here so that is s times you know this thickness this thickness is uh, also given as one inch you have a one inch thickness overall so let's mark that thickness also so the overall thickness that you have 
is one inch over here so the q that you get is s times one right so that is the area remember that is the a prime and then you have to multiply with the y bar prime the y bar prime it is in the center to center so y bar prime is okay, half of the seven so this is the neutral axis this is the center line dimensions which are drawn over here so this is the neutral axis so your uh, y bar prime it is going to be seven by two so that is 3.5 So if you substitute back these things over here, if you put V equals to 10, I equals to 179.7 and Q equals to 3.5 times S, what you will eventually get that your Q in the flange becomes 35 s divided by i so also so you see that one thing that here that it is a linear variation right so it is at s equals to zero at this particular point it is going to be zero it is going to be maximum because we are dealing with the flange the maximum extent the flange goes is up to this half of this five that is at 2.5 over here so let's try to calculate at 2.5 what happens so this essentially your uh, indicates overall that your uh, q of f is zero at s equals to 0 and q of f is maximum at s equals to 2.5 inch so if you if you calculate at uh, 2.5 inch what you will get this uh, at at 2.5 inch it becomes a q of f is 35 times 2.5 divided by uh, your uh, 1 79.7 right now if you put all those values over here uh, you will get the q of f as i have this calculated already it is going to be 0 0.48 uh, remember the unit of q is force per unit length so it is going to be pound per inch right so you're having a linear variation from uh, you know this point over here to up to this one so let's maybe go ahead and you know sort of try to mark uh, that one so let's if we try to mark over here it is going to be you know somewhat like this this should be ideally at the center line but you get the idea so here the value of the this thing is 0 0.48 now what did we what did we you know sort of hypothesize from here that this q must be equals to this q because the water has to flow out over here so let's try to calculate for the web now since this is the web that you see right so for the web let's try to calculate over here and let's see if we get the exact value of 0 0.48 or not now for when you are trying to you know calculate for the web that is you are trying to calculate the q may be at this particular point over here q web at that interface that you see right so if you calculate if you try to calculate over there then the area that you have to consider is this entire area the area that you have you know left behind so let's calculate for the web let's write it for the web qw at interface is going to be equals to same formula vq divided by i now in this case the q is going to be what the q is going to we have this 2.5 over here slightly more than 2.5 but center line dimension suffices 2.5 times this thickness so that is one inch over here so your and times the distance to the neutral axis that is 3.5 so here in this particular case you get the q as 2.5 times 1 times the distance that is 3.5 so you see if you put this back over here right, right everything and if you put v equals to 10 what so your v is equals to 10 and your i is 179.7 right uh, inch raised to 4 and you see if you if you plug all this in it eventually becomes the same thing that you had calculated over here see 10 times 3.5 35 times 2.5 divided by this so here also what you will get is that here also you will eventually get a 0 0.48 it's the same it's like the flow of water whatever water goes there must come out of the other side so here also uh, if i have to draw uh, in this particular uh, place so here also what i get is essentially uh, the same ordinate of uh, uh, sorry this became a little longer than i intended to so let me redraw that 
right so here also you get the same ordinate as 0 0.48 now well, what what we know that in this web this vertical face it is going to have a the minimum value over here and parabolic variation and the maximum is going to be here so i need to calculate at this point as well this point is this d point which was there so at this particular point so let me maybe mark that point also just to have a reference so this is the d point that we had over here so let's calculate at d and let's see what we get at that particular point d and so at d now for d remember since you are here you are trying to calculate that what is the you know cube web at this particular point so at this particular point since you are trying to calculate here the area you have left behind is essentially you know this area started from here and you are doing say one quarter of this one so you have to take this you know particular area that is there so if you calculate that one So essentially this area so that can be broken up into two chunks so it's for 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 calculating that capital q so for this one when you calculate the capital q you have to break the area into two chunks so this one a a a prime y prime y bar prime for this one a prime y bar prime for this one so i will just write it out quickly you can go back later and verify so this boils down to This is the for the first chunk. This is for the first area. This is the top one. So 2.5 this distance 2.5 times 1 and the distance from the centroid here to the neutral axis. This is 3.5. And the second one is for you know this chunk over here. That is 3.5 times this thickness. Thickness is 1 inch throughout times 1 times the you know the distance to the neutral axis. So that should be 3.5 divided by 2. Sorry about that. Right. So if you add that up, you will get as 8.75. Now, again, the same thing if you calculate VQ by I. So at D, you are calculating. So you will get a value of 0.83 kilo pounds per inch. Sorry, in the previous ones, the, I wrote the dimensions as wrong. So it should be kilo pounds because your force is in kips, right? I mistakenly wrote that as just the, the pounds kips is kilo pounds so it will be kips so all throughout it skips so again so what we see over here that at this particular point you're having a value of 0 0.83 and the variation from here to here is going to be parabolic so let's just draw that first the value and then the parabolic variation will draw so here you have you know 0. 83 and the variation from 0 0.48 to here is parabolic so this is just for one quarter the remaining it is going to be the same so i will quickly draw for the remaining you can come back and check that so this is the overall stress distribution sorry the shear flow distribution not the stress distribution as you can see the you know the, the, this was the half this we, this we drew over here 0 0.48 0 0.48 and at the center 0 0.83 and it is repeated across all the four quadrants that you have in your in your diagram over here so uh, just to note remember that this is the linear variation that you were having and this is the the parabolic uh, variation right? so i hope this overall you know example was clear now although this one is the gives, gives you the distribution of q you can imagine that the distribution of your tau the shear stress it is also the same why because your uh, q equals to tau times t so so tau equals to q divided by t so if you take each of these values and you divide by the thickness which is the same in this case the thickness is one inch throughout so if you divide it by the thickness you will get the same uh, no, the same profile for the shear stress distribution so i hope this overall problem was clear uh, then and that you are clear with the concepts of um, shear flow distribution in thin watt section.